There are some days when you know that something wonderful is about to happen. Today is one of those days. So, and uh, we are talking about solder and uh, changing solder. And uh, the number one place where you change solder will make the biggest difference. Everyone is talking about that uh, when you have your amplifier and you look at the schematics, they are looking at it upside down, but never worry about that. Then, uh, then when you look at the elements and then you change the, uh, the connections, then you have an effect on the sound. And, and of course, if you change all of those connections, then you are making a big effect. And for example, that's what AudioNote does, that they use their own solder, uh, high quality solder to make uh, the signal uh, just travel between the parts with lesser losses compared to using uh, some generic solder. And this is just like a basic Rosencore solder and when you look at uh, most uh, amplifiers, most audiophile amplifiers, they are made with solder just like this, something really basic. And when you look at vintage equipment, they are very used with something even worse, uh, solder like this, but with lead inside. And the lead is a really poor conductor, but it uh, flows very well, so it makes a very strong joint, but uh, it does affect especially the high frequencies, so it, it really cuts off the top end and makes uh, smoother uh, high frequencies and uh, that can be a positive thing in some cases because it does hide a lot of the faults in the circuitry. Uh, however, if you don't use solder as a band-aid because you have a proper circuitry, uh, then uh, you can affect really big changes by using a proper solder such as uh, like this caster solder, which has a uh, high silver content, or you can use polyonode solver. This is my favorite solder. However, there's one point that I haven't seen anyone talk about, that where you do the solder change will reap the biggest rewards. And yes, that's the vacuum tube itself. Because when you see there's two types of vacuum tubes, if you look at this uh, 12AX7 tube, you see that those, the two pins of a 12AX7 are not the same as those of a, a 5U4 or a Type 27. Or you can get uh, like a KT120 or any of your power tubes, they have thick pins like that. So if you see thick pins, that's a completely different thing than those skinny pins. Because when you look at these skinny legs, these are the, the support rods, uh, the, the electrode themselves that travel into the vacuum tube. And when you look on the side, you see those uh, pins, they go directly into the vacuum tube itself. However, in the case of these big tubes, when you see those two bases, you see that, that big light base with metal sticking at the end, these big metal pins, they do not go into the glass envelope, but they are part of this big light tube base. And when they make the tube, the, these big tubes, they look just like this tube does after manufacturing, and they put the big big light on the two pins and, and I have to tell you that these big tubes have the same skinny tube pins as a 12AX7 does, but these, what you can see here, these are parts of the Bakelite tube base. And if we can see, you can see that the end of the pin, it, it's really round. And that is so round because that what you see, that round thing, that's solder. So that's where the outer uh, leg, outer pin, it's soldered to that inner skinny leg. And, and here, let's see at the 5U4, here we might see it better. Uh, 
I need a pointer for now. Let's see this. So you see there, it, it's very pointy. So at that point, we can see that that's the inner tube pin and it's sticking out from the tube base. So in this case, the leg of the, of the pin, it's a little bit shorter than the actual pin that reaches into the envelope. And the two of them are soldered together and that part, which uh, is the narrowing down part, that's solder. And this big part, that is the outer metallic leg. You see, and if you change this solder here, that's going to make the biggest difference in sound for your amplifier. So if you are wondering what is the effect of changing solder in your amp, just do this thing, get your power tube and uh, look up in the tube manual, in the tube data sheet, which is the pin for the grid and change the grid pins solder to the solder that you prefer, that you want to check out what its sound is because the grid pin is the one that's going to make the biggest difference of them all. And of course, you can change the others as well, changing the, the screen pin if it's a pentode and changing the plate and the cathode. These are going to get you the next biggest uh, upgrades. Not as big as the grid pin, but really significant as well. And you can leave the filament pins for the last. Uh, that's going to give you a big change as well. But with the filament pins, you have to be careful because when you change it to a higher quality solder, you are going to decrease the resistance of your filament by a lot. So for example, if, you, if we had this tube here, which is the 5U4GB rectifier, it, it's like a 5 volt filament. So if you plop the tube in, you will read 5.0 volts for the filament. And now if you change the, the filament pins and uh, remove the solder there and get a much better quality uh, high silver solder that has noticeably higher conductivity and you will measure 5.2 volts or maybe even higher. It depends on your actual transformer and how your amplifier is built. But you will notice a noticeable or maybe even a significant increase. So for example, in my 807 power tube, when I did that, that has a 6.3 volt filament. I think that shot up to 6.8 volts in my amp. So be ready that if you change the filament pin, change it only if you can adjust the filament voltage because probably you have to adjust it afterwards. If, if the difference is such that from 6.3 it jumps to 6.8, you have to adjust the voltage. Otherwise, at 6.8 volts, you are going to burn up your tube. If it just uh, increases like from 6.3 to 6.35, or it was, let's say, 6.1 volts, and then it becomes 6.3, you are good. You don't need to change anything. But if you are noticing something like that, like a 10% plus increase, then you have to drop the filament voltage. If you are not ready to do that, then stay clear of the filament tube pins and just focus on the grid the screen, if it's a pentode, and the cathode, and the plate. So now I'll show you the secrets how to do it in the next video. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope this was wonderful news for everyone, something that you don't hear every day. So thank you. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.